We've been talking on the subject of wisdom and talking about wisdom being the principal thing. I want to start this uh, day by talking to you from Proverbs chapter number one. And Solomon starts uh, the book of Proverbs by saying, to know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding. And then he goes on to say, a wise man in verse five will hear and will increase in learning. And he says to his son, he says, understand Proverbs, know the dark sayings of the word. And he says, to, to have the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. And then he says, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. So Proverbs chapter number four tells us that wisdom is the principal thing. And so to, to make wisdom the principal thing or the thing of principles, we must be individuals that love instruction. If we hear instruction, instruction then becomes like an ornament, Solomon says, worn around uh, our, our necks. So Proverbs chapter number 8 talks about how wisdom being the principal thing, how God possessed wisdom from the beginning. So he says in verse number 22 of Proverbs 8, The Lord possessed me wisdom from the be very beginning. Before his works of old, I wisdom was with him. I was set up from everlasting and from the beginning. And so my deal is this, is, is if, if God who is omnipotent, who God who, who is omniscient and can do all things, if God seeks to possess wisdom and to embrace wisdom, then we as created beings should the more so seek wisdom and the need for wisdom. Uh, Proverbs tells us that, that with wisdom, wisdom will add value to our lives because wisdom is better than silver and gold. It's better than money. It's better than the kinds of things that human beings tend uh, to chase. When we look at the kind of wisdom that is multiplied in our lives, it says that with this kind of wisdom, your life is increased or multiplied. Your years are lengthened. Uh, Proverbs chapter number 9 and verse 9 says, if you'll give instruction to this kind of a person that's seeking wisdom, that person will increase in wisdom because the fear of the Lord is to seek wisdom that one's life may be lengthened and one's life may be increased. The scripture says in Proverbs chapter number 4 and verse 20 that wisdom, the scriptures, is like medicine. It heals a person's body. It comes into a person's life and, and takes what is devoid in a person's life and adds value into it. And so when we seek wisdom as the principal thing, it says that the path of a person that seeks wisdom, that path of that person will be a shining light. And that light will shine more and more into a perfect day. Proverbs chapter number 4 and verse 18 because wisdom then begins to shine light on, on a very disparaging future or a future that we cannot understand, where, where there's tremendous darkness and we could stumble. Wisdom, the principal thing, shines a light before us. And before we take a step, what could have been a stumbling stone becomes a stepping block for our lives. When wisdom comes into our heart, it then becomes illumination into our eyes where we see things in a different way our approach to life and challenges and issues, uh, we view those in a different light uh, all the time because wisdom is added to our life. We move away from being irresponsible with our words, irresponsible with our rash statements, and we become more deliberate in the way we speak, Proverbs chapter number 4 and verse 24, where we, we direct our words into specific things to add value to and to bring grace uh, in, in our conversation. Wisdom in Proverbs chapter number 4 and verse 22. Wisdom is life to those that find uh, the words of wisdom. They actually add life to you. They add a strength to you. And then he says something that I really like in Proverbs 4 and 22, that wisdom becomes health to all your flesh. One version actually says wisdom becomes medicine where, where it actually has healing values in our lives and the message version says we begin to burst forth in health in body and in soul 
So wisdom is the principal thing. When we begin to seek wisdom, it is here that we see the premise of the God, the promise of God upon our lives. Because every person, no matter who you are, no matter where you come from, you are here with a specific assignment and you have deliberate promises that God has given you. But to understand some of those promises and to understand that assignment is going to take a God-given wisdom. And so we come to the life of a man like Solomon who is given the responsibility of governing a nation. The nation that Solomon is going to govern is a nation that David built uh, with very difficult circumstances and conditions, the nation of Israel. And after David dies and Solomon becomes the king of Israel, uh, Solomon is going to now ask God in his prayer for wisdom. And so in 1 Kings chapter number 3, uh, Solomon has this wonderful dream. And uh, in this dream, God speaks to him and says to him, Solomon, whatever you want, I will give you. And God gives Solomon literally a blank check. And, and in this literal blank check, Solomon says to his heavenly father, who is on the top of the ladder, and Solomon's in the middle of his sleep on his bed, he says to his father, I, I want you to give me wisdom. Give me wisdom. Give me an understanding heart. Because we have such a great people that we, we're leading, a people with such tremendous destiny, a people that are loaded with what you have given. I'm asking you to give me wisdom. And, and so the Bible says in 1 Kings chapter number 3 and verse 10, that after Solomon prayed for an understanding heart and prayed for wisdom, he says that the speech pleased the Lord. It pleased God that Solomon had asked for this thing. And God said to him, he said in verse 11, because Solomon, you have asked for wisdom. You haven't asked for long life. You haven't asked for riches. You haven't asked for the life of your enemies. Uh, but because you have asked for, for wisdom and understanding to discern things, he said, I'm going to impart to you the kind of wisdom that literally is going to blow your mind, but not just yours, but those of generations and, and even for millenniums, millenniums to come. We are still in awe in the 21st century as to the kind of wisdom that God had given Solomon. God gave Solomon a life map. God gave Solomon a, a, a long-term strategy. He imparted wisdom into Solomon's life that... Uh, still today is unmatched. To where his wisdom produced over 3,000 proverbs, many, many songs. His wisdom was applied to kingdoms around the world in his day and kingdoms around the world even today. Where his wisdom produced uh, unfathomable riches. Uh, Solomon's day produced a, a, a zenith, a, an acme, a peak of phenomenal wealth. That, that all of Israel got the benefit of. Uh, Solomon's standard of living, his standard of justice, his standard of judgment is literally unprecedented because God gave him wisdom. James said in James chapter number 1 and verse 5, If we lack wisdom, let us ask of God and he'll give to all men liberally. So wisdom is the principal thing. It's going to add uh, strength to your life. It's going to add blessing to your life. But I want to close this particular session on wisdom being the principal thing. is because some of us listening there are parents. Some of us are about to be married or just got married. There might be somebody here who is a grandfather, grandmother, maybe even great-grandparents. One of the things that you can impart to the next generation, to your children and to your grandchildren, maybe you're a school teacher. In my case, I'm a pastor and I teach thousands of people on a Sunday. One of the things that I have to impart to them and demonstrate to them is the wisdom of God. It's got to be on display in my life. And so my prayer is, as a grown man of 57 years old, in this 2014, I'm praying that God would let me have the stature and show the wisdom of, of a mature adult man, that all of my sons, spiritual and physical, that observe me can see the wisdom of God in my life, that my choices and my decisions display the wisdom of God so that when people look at my life and hear my words and, and uh, they see demonstrated in my lifestyle 
uh, the wisdom that's displayed, they'll know that that comes from God and they can seek that too. And so for all of you, I pray that you'll ask God for wisdom, which is the principal thing to direct your life and to govern your life and to guard your life. May the Lord bless you and keep you in your quest for wisdom. I'm Bishop Judah Bismarck from Harare, Zimbabwe, the pastor of New Life Covenant Church. God bless you.